All right, today we're going to be answering your questions about this machine, the Breville Dual Boiler. Yesterday, I put out a story on Instagram asking what you would still like to know about this machine or what you would like us to test before we potentially say goodbye to it. If you don't already follow me on Instagram, go check that out so you don't miss future questionnaires. Now, the most common question was, of course, why are we potentially saying goodbye to this machine? And I want to make it very, very clear that it has nothing to do with not liking the Breville dual boiler. In fact, it's quite the opposite. This is a spectacular machine, but the fact of the matter is we have a lot of espresso machines in the lab currently, and I'd really love to free up some budget to bring in some new and exciting stuff that you guys are requesting. So that's all, that's all it has to do with. Now let's move on to some of the other questions. This one is asking how many lattes can you make back to back without this machine needing a break? Now I tested this in pretty much the most rigorous way possible in that I didn't give it a break where you would normally have a break to grind more coffee. I simply ran the volume of water, steamed the volume of water, and then immediately repeated. And it never really asked for a break. The temperature always showed 200 degrees. Only twice did it drop slightly and within three seconds it was back up to temperature. So the answer is you can pretty much run indefinitely, especially if you're going to be taking that time to grind more coffee. Um, it has a slightly different boiler arrangement than a typical dual boiler and I think that's what allows it to accomplish this. The next question was what would be a good grinder to pair with the dual boiler and is the Breville Smart Grinder Pro a good enough grinder? And I think the answer to that comes down to why you'd be looking to upgrade to this machine in the first place. If you're simply looking for better capacity in terms of steaming power over something like the Express or Pro, then the Breville Smart Grinder Pro is going to do you just fine. You're going to get some added espresso quality from the 58mm Porta filter, all of the temperature accuracy in those adjustments, and you're also going to get that capacity that you're looking for. However, if your reason for upgrading to this machine is truly to get better espresso quality, then I think you're going to want to look at something better than the Breville Smart Grinder Pro, as that grinder is essentially exactly the same as what you're getting in the Express or the Pro. So you'll want to take a look at something like a Eureka, maybe a Brazza Sette, the Niche, that new Malconig grinder that is coming out, which we're going to be getting on the channel soon. Any of those grinders will help you elevate that espresso quality to what I think you're going to be expecting from a higher caliber machine. The next question was, did I play around with the pre-infusion settings on this machine? And the answer is absolutely yes. It's one of the most impressive parts about the dual boiler. The dual boiler gives you the ability to not only set your pre-infusion duration, but also the pre-infusion pressure. The way that I had it set up is I used the pre-infusion pressure set at level 60, and I set the duration for every new coffee that I got just until I saw the first drips in the cup. So this would be somewhere historically around 12 to 15 seconds. And that yielded some really good results. It helped to add a little bit of sweetness. And it's definitely a unique part about the dual boiler that not a lot of other machines in this price bracket have. So to answer the question, I absolutely played around with that. And it's one of the big selling features on this machine. The next question is a quick one. How long does it take to warm up? Right before filming this video, I started a timer, I booted up the machine, and it took 9 minutes to reach 200 degrees. Now, I also did a bit of googling and some people are saying closer to 7 minutes. This machine is an older generation, so that might contribute to why it takes slightly longer. But expect anywhere between 7 to 9 minutes from a completely cold startup. Of course, you can always program this machine to turn on in the morning so that it's really, really hot the second you wake up. But if you're starting it in the middle of the day, expect between seven to nine minutes and always remember that you have to warm up the porta filter as well. The next question is how easy is the cleaning and descaling compared to the other Breville's? When it comes to a cleaning or back flushing cycle, it's just as simple on this machine, very straightforward. When it comes to a descale, the dual boiler is going to be far more involved. The lower end Breville's you're simply flushing through a descaling solution. On the dual boiler, you'll need to empty out both the boilers introduce your descaling solution and then flush them back out. It's a far more lengthy process. You need a screwdriver and this access point to allow those boilers to flush independently. So it's definitely more involved, but there are instructions out there. I have an instruction on my channel. The next question is a really good one. Everyone knows this machine has a 58 millimeter port filter, but it is not compatible with other E61 millimeter group heads. In classic 
Apple, Breville, big name fashion. They've made a proprietary group head. No idea why they would do this, but I'll show the differences on the screen now. The Breville's are just a little bit smaller, not allowing any other E61 group heads to lock in. With that being said, there are some good third party options now being made for these machines. And Breville also offers a stock 58 millimeter bottomless, if that's what you're after. Next question, how does the shot quality compare to something like the Flare 58? They're both 58 millimeter machines. They're both notoriously good value for money. How do they compare? Well, unfortunately, we haven't gotten the Flare 58 in the studio yet, but we will be getting it in very soon. And I'll try to answer that question as best as I can when we do that. The next question, as you would expect, was also a very common one. Is the dual boiler worth it over the Barista Express or the Barista Pro? And I kind of answered this before, but again, it comes down to what you consider an upgrade. If you're just looking for better capacity for latte making, this is definitely a good upgrade. If you make a lot of lattes back to back for a lot of people, a lot of the time, you're tired of waiting for a single boiler to switch between brewing and steaming, it just takes you too long, this will be a great upgrade. Just be sure that you're able to pair it with an equally capable grinder like Breville's. However, if you're looking to get better espresso quality over something like the Espresso Pro, it is my opinion that you're going to want to pair this with also a higher quality grinder like a Eureka, a Niche, Malkonig, something in that higher bracket. The 58mm portafilter, the added temperature stability, those pre-infusion settings to play around with, they will get you a bump in espresso quality if paired with a Breville grinder, but to get something that I believe is worth the price increase, you're going to want to get a better quality grinder as well. The final question is something that I fully intend to do a full length video on, but I'll try to answer it now as well. Dual boiler or rocket apartamento? And these machines, in my opinion, are for very different people. The Breville gives you a huge range of adjustability. It has temperature adjustment, pre-infusion, boiler pressure, a lot of different things to play around with, and it is arguably far more capable than the Apartamento. But what it gains in functionality, the Apartamento gains in build quality, tactile feel, and overall, in my opinion, enjoyment when you're using it. I use the Apartamento daily, and this kind of sits in the studio getting unused. I really like the tactile feel of the Apartamento, the bomb-proof build quality, the temperature stability that an E61 does offer if used correctly. So they're really different machines for different people. They're tough to compare. If you're looking specifically from a technical standpoint, the Breville is far more technically capable, but the Rocket appeals to a different subset of the market. It's very high quality, it's very classic, it accomplishes the same thing in a different way. So it's a tough question to answer. You really need to look internally into what you want out of your espresso experience. If you just want an enjoyable routine, I would probably say go with the Rocket. If you really love to tinker and play around and push your espresso to the limit, I might look at the Breville. So again, a full length video will be coming on that. Stay tuned. But for now, that is my summary. So I hope I was able to answer all the questions that were submitted. If I happen to miss one, I do apologize. There will be some more videos coming out with this, such as a full review, a comparison to the Rocket, and maybe a couple others. So it's not going anywhere immediately, but the Breville possibly on its way out. So thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave us a like, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss future videos with the machine. Check us out on Instagram and I will see you in the next one.